I was sitting here one time and I heard a very distinct Spirit Talker. Running. Scarlet. Scarlet, right? <laughs> right away we got a name. Right away and got a name. Who are you, Scarlet? I used to know Scarlet. Did you? She died in Katrina. Really? No way. Whoa. So my question is, can you see us right now? Can you maybe describe what we look like? Maybe something that we're wearing? And he's like, What's the problem? And he goes, that chair, bad energy. Mm -hmm. Stop! Stop! Go! This is it. Okay. So you Music! Oh man, what? What's up guys, welcome back to a brand new haunted adventure. We are back in Ontario. I know I've been doing a lot of traveling all over the place, but we're finally doing a really cool haunted location back home. We're actually in Woodstock, Ontario at a place known as Wade Manor. We're actually here with the owner. He's been giving us a ton of the history. House was built back in the 1900s. Doctor used to live here. Tons of people have kind of come in and out. But the coolest part is that he is kind of a collector, as you can see of... What would you even call these items? Just um, antiques? Antiques, curiosities, macabre items. Um, politically, in, politically sensitive items, right. and it, pretty much anything you're not supposed to have, or might offend someone, or scare someone, or possess someone, or whatever, or is haunted. I own it. Mm -hmm. So there's also, I mean, there's a little bit. It's like it's a, it's a mixed bag of items. Right. All historical and stuff from murder sites, stuff from hospitals, funeral homes, prisons, jails. Um, God. It, Famous hotels, uh, haunted hotels. I mean, you name it, I probably have it. At least one or two of something. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a mixed bag. You're you're not gonna be bored when you come here. Definitely. So one of the coolest things so far that I found is that he actually has a lot of items that are from abandoned locations that I've been to. No idea how the hell you managed to do that. That is like super cool. But he says it's really easy to do. So maybe I'll go and buy some stuff soon. Maybe add to my collection, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be here all night. Uh, I got Jeff right now behind the camera, so of course, go and subscribe to him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you ready to have a good time? All right, let's do it. My name is Dustin Wade. Welcome to my house. Uh, a little history about the house. Well, we'll start with the, with the land first. So originally, this was crown land, um, and it was sold to one gentleman by the last name of Gibson, and then it was sold pretty quickly to a gentleman by the name of. Dr. Levi Hoyt Perry. So Dr. Levi Hoyt Perry was Woodstock's first physician. He was an American, uh, an American physician. He came up here in the early 1800s. He fell in love, he married, settled down, and basically was Woodstock's first physician. And that's why the name of the street is Perry Street because he owned this particular stretch of land which would have went probably from around Dundas all the way down to around Finkel Street. Other than the one token reference where he got into some kind of squabble with a church and they referred to him as a, quote, man of questionable piety and virtue, unquote, I could find nothing bad about him. So, I mean, I don't really put much faith into what was said about him. But uh, and that's I couldn't really find anything else about him. So, yeah, that particular, this is why the street is called Perry Street. In regards to the house, the house is listed at 1900. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's 1900 because there's reason to believe through, you know, the stained glass windows and the, and the materials that fabricated the house that the house was somewhat older. Mm -hmm. So the house could be somewhere between the late 1800s and certainly no newer than 19 because according to census, uh, your municipal clerks, they would say to you, okay, we knew the house was not any newer than 19, so we would list it at 1900. So typically they would round up. So at the very least, the house is 124 years old, probably more like 144 years old. In regards to the actual nature of the house, so this is a three-story, uh, this would be considered an upper uh, middle class three-story home. Um, so not on par with like the palatial estates on Van Sittard Avenue, which was named after Admiral Van Sittard. So if you're looking for the most expensive, the most opulent homes in Woodstock, 
you're going to find them up the street. So we're in the shadow of Van Sitter. Uh, so this would have had at least probably one or two live-in working servants because you'll notice at the back of the house they have a set of servant staircases. So the servant staircase would allow the servants to be, you know, to work amongst the house, have access to the house, um, you know, all three floors of the house uh, without interrupting the lord or lady of the manor. So typically back then servants were to be seen only when the lord or lady of the manor wanted them to be seen. Um, and called upon. Other than that, they were to kind of stay out of view and just, you know, deal with the typical, uh, you know, day-to-day -day chores of the house, the cooking, the cleaning, the whatever, the greeting of guests, which leads us to this particular room. Uh, so this is the sitting room. So basically this is where guests would be, uh, would be greeted. So the door would ring, the, you know, the servant would come down, they'd answer the door, They'd bring the guest into this room. They'd ask them to just politely retire and sit for a while. And the, the, of course, uh, the servant would go to the Lord or Lady of the Manor and say, okay, your guest has arrived. Um, so this is where the guest would be greeted typically, would be in the sitting parlor. And then when the, you know, the, the master of the house or the lady of the house would come down, they would retire to the drawing room. So that's why the sitting room and the drawing room are so close. Now the drawing room was typically um, for family and greeting of, well, just not greeting of guests, but the entertaining of guests. Uh, and of course, because it has a fireplace, it was the most comfortable part of the actual house. Um, so yeah, this is a sitting parlor. You would be brought into the guest, or into the, uh, the drawing room, which of course is separated by two pocket doors uh, to the dining room. First things first, how long have you been living here? Uh, I moved here 2011. Okay, so quite some time. When you moved in, what was the experience like? Um, even the first week that I was here, there was a lot of weird, unexplained things kind of happening. Mm -hmm. um, every penny I had, I sank into the house. So when I moved in, I literally had nothing. Like what I had was a donated couch, a donated bed. All of it came from my mom. But other than that, like the house was completely empty. There's yeah. a few items upstairs in the attic that the previous owner had left. It was like a television that got like eight channels. There was some rickety old fabric chair, but um, other than that, there was nothing here. Nothing. So everything you've added here is just slowly <clears throat> over time. Slowly over time, it was all almost, I'd say 95% of it was locally procured. Mm -hmm. When I say locally, I'm talking about like Ontario, so like driving. Right. So um, as far as Windsor, um, Niagara Falls, uh, Barrie, Toronto, that's pretty much it. So Okay, so um, apart from the actual collection, what has your experience been like paranormal-wise? You said pretty much since day one. What kind of things were, were happening? Uh, items going missing and turning up in really odd places, like your keys in your fridge. Yeah, um, that's pretty odd. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> pretty odd. Um, um, voices... Tap. It, it went through this period where it would like to tap on stuff. Like we're sitting in the di we're sitting in the in the the drawing room right now. Yeah. Um. We've got the the original um brass chandelier. Mm. Okay. And prime example. One time I was like, you know, I sit in that particular chair when I'm watching right. TV. I'm having a couple beers, and I'd get up and I walk into the kitchen, grab a beer, come back. I remember one time I came out and I was grabbing something off the table, and as I was walking underneath the table, I heard a distinct clink. And I looked up, and the chandelier was doing this. Oh. Wow. Okay, so, like, I'm 5'7". Yeah. I know I didn't hit my head on that. Yeah. But that was a reoccurring thing, and that was yeah. something they did on a regular basis. Because after that, um, if you go into the bedroom, the lamps on either side of the bed are not the original lamps that I had there. There's another pair that are up in the attic that used to be there. So they all have, like, hanging crystals and all that. And what I would do is, you know, I'd get into bed, I'd tuck myself in... And I'd lay on my back because I get a really bad back. So I try and get comfortable. So I just, okay, I'm just going to lie here and get still. I'm going to casually drift off, drift off. And then I hear this clink and I turn on the light and look and there'd be a crystal and it would be oh, doing this. Yeah. So it was, I, I, I got to a point where I used to call it waving. It's like it was okay. just saying, hi, it's me. I'm still here. Just letting you know that it's... Nothing, around. yeah, like nothing invasive, nothing threatening. Um, it was just kind of like it was saying, I'm here. Mm. And then there would be like phantom noises, doors opening and closing on their own, locking on their own, mm. um, electrical issues. Like it was, it was 
most of the stuff has been pretty non-invasive. Right. A couple of times it's broke stuff, and I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> one time I said, can you please not break something that's glass? Because glass is expensive to, right. to, to, you know, to replace. But on the whole, it's a been relatively harmonious experience. I've never been, you know, hurt. Um, Have you start? Did you start uh, noticing shadows like right away? No. Or the, the, what I noticed was okay, and, we're, and I would sit like that's my 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 go to like yeah. you know Jean Luc. That's, that's, that's like my <laughs> my Jean Luc. That's like my Jean Luc Picard chair. Like that's like <laughs> that's like you know the the captain's chair. So because I, I watch TV from it, um, and what I would notice okay is it and it was always at night. You know, I had all the lights off and I had like the the red lights on. Mm -hmm. Okay, for you know whatever, and I would be sitting here watching TV. And you would see a shadow and it would creep out from behind the mannequin. It would be okay. on the floor. So it would kind of just kind of gradually go out like this. But you'd only see it like on the, like on the floor? You would, the only see, you would only see it on the floor. Huh. You'd be sitting here and you would see the shadow come creeping onto the floor. And I, and I would stand up. And when you stand up and you start walking towards it, you see it recede. Oh. So it was almost like it was just doing this. Yeah. And then it would just, yeah. Kind of looking at you. Like. It was just checking you out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what the hell is he doing over there? Um, but again, it was it was nothing threatening or whatever. It was just kind of like saying hi. But the one experience that I had that scared the shit out of me, I was going up into the attic and um, I got to the top of the stairs and, you know, there's that little passage before you actually get to the light and you turn it on. Mm -hmm. And I remember I got to the top of the stairs and I took a couple steps out and a shadow, you know that, you know, it sounds stereotypical, but you know when they say like a black of the black, mm -hmm. okay, it literally lunged past me and I kind of bolted up and I flicked on the light. I'm like, okay, someone broke into the house. Yeah. They're hiding my, and I said, okay, you know, if you're in the house, you're behind the bar, you got nowhere to go. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm, you, you can, you know, make it easy on yourself. No one, no one came out. So I grabbed a weapon because I mean, it's the lodge. So I got all sorts of swords up there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's going to be me or him and it's not going to be yeah. me. <laughs> and there was only one place for it to go was behind the bar. Right. And I looked behind the bar, there was nothing there. Huh. Whoa. So that was kind of interesting. But here's what made it interesting, even more interesting, should, I should say. Years later, I was watching an episode of Destination, or sorry, yeah, it was Destination Fear. And it was when they explored that uh, sanatorium and it was in New York State. Okay. And they actually caught one of the shadow figures crossing the hall. Mm. Like it looked like it was making like a beeline, like it was right, darting right. across the yeah. hall. And when I saw that, I had, that was like my eureka moment because I saw that one. That's exactly, that's exactly what, what happened. The exact same thing. It's like someone just made a beeline from one part of the room to the other. Mm. So this particular um, door leads to a room. And um, I couldn't figure out what the room was for. Uh, I've... The house next door to mine is very similar uh, to this house, except the house next door, you can see from the front door right into the dining room. Now, in my house, obviously, you can't do that. So at some point, this house was modified, why I have no idea, but a secret room was put in this. And I, to the life of me, I can't figure out who did it, when it was done, or what the purpose was. But this room was added after the fact. So what I did was I used that room and I turned it into a psychomantium, which if you know about Victorian times, you know, spiritualism was huge from the late 1800s right. to the early 1900s. Um, so scrying was huge. So I built a psychomantium, which is a, basically it's a meditation chamber. It's a deep meditation chamber, typically used for scrying and so on and so forth. Maybe that's what it was used before, before well, right? Uh, it's possible. entirely possible. Yeah. Who knows? I, it's, it's a one mystery that I can never yeah. figure out. Um, I can never figure out. So that's the, that's the, the I call it, well, the psychomantium. Now, yeah. do I use it every once in a while? Yeah. But when I initially purchased the house, someone had used it as a closet. Mm -hmm. um, so God only knows. But uh, so yeah, psychomantium, dining room. Now, true story, I've owned this house 12 years. I gotta be, I gotta be brutally honest. I've had one meal here. Mm. I've literally had one meal. I can't, I do not like eating in the dining room, it just yeah. makes me feel lonely. You know, it's a big room. There's nobody here. So mm -hmm. it's like, but yeah, this would have been for you know, a, typically a, you know, a good size, a decent sized family. You know, two kids, three kids, whatever. So we go up the stairs. Going up the stairs. So these pieces are all opium related. Mm -hmm. So that's an opium serving tray. It's an antique opium serving tray. 
That's an opium, that's a pillow out of an opium den. Okay. And these are opium scales. So originally, the Chinese would have used that to measure gold dust, but they adapted them to opium. Okay. So, uh, yeah, those are opium scales. You know, it's been a bit of a narrow, uh, yeah. <laughs> staircase. Well, yeah, I mean, like, no, I mean, I, I mean, I would have been a, considered a bigger guy in the yeah. Victorian time. So, like, I mean, and I'm not even big. I'm like five seven, 135 pounds. <laughs> so. I guess I was a giant then, Jesus. Oh, for sure. Oh, there you are, Jesus. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. So this, this was my idea, like, you know, when I found it that it was like Perry Street, Dr. Levi Hoy Perry, I said, you know what, how about I build him his own little, like, doctor's office? So a lot of stuff in here is from doctor's offices. Right. Um, that's, that's a late 1800s uh, dental chair. This is a, a nitrous oxide machine, laughing gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually got two of them. So uh, you ever, tr you ever tried it? <laughs> what? Have you ever tried it? I, I, I would see if it works. I wouldn't do that because that would be wrong. Right. That would be wrong. We Off do camera. That. That would, that would we'll be talk wrong. about it later. <laughs> that would be wrong. Right? So that um, cabinet came out of a, a Hamilton Psychiatric Hospital. Okay. Uh, this is I actually got two of these. Um, weird story with it. This is a 1954 Sanborn Metabulator. Mm -hmm. um, a true story, uh, about a decade ago, I was down in Louisiana, and specifically New Orleans for a summer, and I was going through the Pharmacy Museum. The Pharmacy Museum, the pharmacy museum is the oldest pharmacy in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, it's now it's a museum. So the tour guide, he's walking us through, and he takes us up to the second level, and he says, um, and he goes, and he gets to this, he goes, and this, and I said, oh, that's a 1954 Sanborn Metabulator, and he goes, how the hell did you know that? And I said, I have one in my house. And he goes, you don't have one in your house. So I whipped up my phone and go, there you go, look. You <laughs> so, and then the irony, years later, I found another one. So I got that one tucked behind the door. So I got not one, but two. Why do I have them? I don't know, because they can't. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, there it is. It was the second one. I got not one, but two. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is, uh, that came, that's a 1920s uh, uh, exam chair. That's a bell lamp. It's a bell, bell surgical lamp. That was in pieces when I got it. I found that at a Goodwill, mm -hmm. and I restored it by hand. I had someone, one of my buddies, an electrician, fix it up. Um, this desk came out of the Royal York Hotel. Oh, cool. So there's all sorts of, like, there's so much stuff. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff. All sorts of haunted objects everywhere. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Remember that, we that, had the, the, the word boots come out on Spirit Dog? Yeah. Here? Oh, yeah, I forgot oh, about that. Yeah, boots. yeah the, the polio boots. Oh, that's interesting. Polio boots. Polio boots. Okay, what do you mean by polio boots? Like, I need an explanation. Like pol like when you polio damaged your leg. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So those were yeah back when polio uh, was bad. Yeah. So you would wear those. Like yeah. um, like a oh I gum. see yeah because yeah like, Forrest Gump uh, and um, um, uh, Franklin uh, Roosevelt had polio. Right. That's why he was in a wheelchair. Right. Oh that's right yeah. So bathroom is pretty pretty basic. Mm -hmm. Um. Guest room, so I'll walk into the guest room. So if you get really drunk, this is where you're gonna be spending the night. Okay. <laughs> um, so a lot of interesting pieces in here. Um, this particular piece was given to my mother um, by the family who invented Javex. Oh wow! Believe, yeah, one of the one of the descendants who invented Javex. Um, it's 1800s. It's got the uh, the they've got the gargoyle down there. It's supposed to ward oh, off wow. evil spirits. That's cool. Um, this particular painting, that's this is one of my favorites. So this, that painting there, um, was done by a psychiatric patient who was uh, institutionalized uh, hmm. almost his whole life. And then when he passed, he was allowed to paint. And then when he passed away, someone bought all his paintings and was buying them to resell them. And that mm -hmm. was the one that he couldn't sell. So I bought I bought that off of him and uh, did him a favor, but um, the interesting is thing is, I've seen shadow figures like that in the attic. I saw mm. one instance where I see, yeah, so it was kind of uh, kind of spooky. But that used to reside down in the living room. But when I got the other, um, I got the painting from the, the Asian gambling parlor. Mm -hmm. I put that down there and I put this up here. So um, yeah, it's kind of uh, this this lamp came out of the old. Uh, the old ballroom at Crystal Beach. Okay. 
So is it haunted? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's just a wonderfully beautiful piece. And yeah. like, I love all the woodwork. And it's got like I mean, it angels. It looks the, haunted. It's got angels in the base and all this mm -hmm. is like. So the guy I bought that from, he bought it when that when the contents of that place were closed, and then he had it since then. And then a few years ago, he was consolidating and he sold it to me. But wow. uh, that's one of my favorite pieces too. Cool. So, so we're gonna go Whoa. into the den. What the heck? <laughs> it's, it's just never light. ending. Oh, that's a sick chair. Well, okay, so you're gonna see a lot of different chairs and all that, and they look yeah. like throne like. Okay, I'm a member of the I'm a member of the Masonic Order. I'm a past master okay. from a Masonic Lodge and a fellow of the college. I'm a past district deputy grand master for the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, and I'm also a lodge chaplain for the Orange Order. So when a lot of these lodges close, um, the process is is this. First thing you do is we call around to see if there are any other lodges that need stuff, because the stuff's gonna be getting moved out. Mm -hmm. And if they don't um, you know, they might take something or they may, may not take anything, but then stuff is going to go to Grand Lodge and they can decide where it's going to go. Um, so the members can take stuff or they may not take stuff. A lot of stuff gets donated to me because, again, I've been a member for so long of the various fraternities and I preserve our history. I was chair of education for probably like eight years. So it means I'm traveling the district talking about, you know, what we do and so on and so forth in our history. So these are chairs out of an Odd Fellows Lodge. These were particular ones out of Kingsville. Um, so... You'll see the mark, you know, like C, N, G, V. So, you know, so PG, past grand, mm -hmm. vice grand, chaplain. And this kind of beat up, but there used to be a full N there, and that's okay. normal grand. So that would have been my chair because the person, the individual who sits in that chair governs the lodge. Okay. Um, so basically they run the meeting, you know, their word is law. Um, so basically, yeah, you'll see a lot of different chairs and so on and so forth. Many of them from Oddfellow Lodges, some from Forrester Lodges. Um, God, there's so much stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is kind of like my study. This is where I do like my work, and sometimes I'll do like you know I have, I have people I do tarot readings for and consultations and all that. So this is kind of the intimacy of the room in which right. I do them. Um, yeah, that's, that's so. This is the den. This is the working den. <laughs> oh, and, and over here is where I keep all my um, yeah, all sorts of, like my regalia, custom made box. Uh, underneath this, yeah, this is a custom made. Um, uh, a Ouija table. Oh, a Ouija cool. table. Yeah, literally. So hmm. I don't pull it out very often because I don't. Uh, it's a hassle putting it back. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, that sometimes I'm like, yeah, I want to, but I don't. Yeah. You know, I get old, I'm tired, my back hurts. So get off my arm, kind of a deal. What? Right? Frank. And it stops. That's interesting. And now it's done. Okay. It was like 15. What is going on here? Are you, are you done? No? Guess not. I'm going for a big one. Sword, sword it amongst yourself. Yeah. All right, guys, so we're starting out here up in the doctor's office, and uh, this REM pod is going crazy. <laughs> like it's nonstop. Insane. Yeah. Are you trying to talk to us? Let us know you're here. I guess so. You're gonna have a second. <coughs> see if yours does the same thing. It did for a second. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Look, yeah. Look. What the heck? Huh. Well, that's fascinating. Just going berserk. Whoa. There's another one there on the left, my left. Can you make it go off too? You clearly uh, are liking the first one. Well, at least that's an indicator that there is something uh, something going on. Yeah. Oh, that's mine. That was yours? Yeah, that was mine. Can you go again for that? For that one? <clears throat> so we're gonna get uh, Spirit Talker running. Scarlet. Scarlet, right? <laughs> right away we got a name. Right away and got a name. Who are you, Scarlet? I used to know Scarlet. Did you? She died in Katrina. 
Really? No way. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, and, con- yeah she died in Katrina. We were we were pen pals. Huh. And uh, we had a conversation online. And uh, when Katrina was coming, it was like, she worked as a bartender in the quarter. Mm-hmm. I said, Scarlett, I'm worried that you're not going to make it out. And she goes, oh, fine. They got everything under control. Yeah. They're going to be okay. Didn't make it out. Yeah, oh, damn. Did she live in that in the quarter she, as well? She lived in the quarter. She lived above the bar that she worked damn, at. That's crazy. <gasps> so yeah, that was um, yeah, that was the last I heard of her. Scarlett, are you here to visit your friend? Whoa. Okay, that was. Uh... Whoa. <laughs> oh man. So you are here to visit your friend. That that's that's really nice. <clears throat> well, my name is Jeff. Actually, Jean Francois, but I'm I'm French, so I use Jeff. It's easier. I'm not gonna lie, I prefer Jean Francois. Oh. Sounds sexy. It's sexy, like like <laughs> like, like, like you, wee 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 wee. Tabernet, tabernet, s'il vous plaît. What? Olivia. Olivia. Do you know what Olivia? Ciao. But I'm glad she's not my bear. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, just well, she's alive, so. <laughs> my name is Helen. Helen. Oh, it's really weird. We're getting all these female names that I know. Yeah. We're getting a ton of female yeah. names. Okay. Well, clearly you know how to use this. If you got anything to say. Yeah, I'm gonna put another light right. Right here. Oh, we got the ghost light. Ghost. Ghosty light. Right. What is going on with this thing? It normally it doesn't react like that. It's got the fancy light. Ready to go? Do you believe in us? Yes, actually. That's why we're here. So my question is, can you see us right now? Can you maybe describe what we look like? Maybe something that we're wearing? I'm gonna take a walk down the uh, the hallway. No, a Mary? A Mary? Yeah. It doesn't ring a bell off the top of my head right now. Can you move away from that thing, please? So, I got this room over here, too. She thrives on fear. She thrives on fear? Oh, no. I'm good. I got a light. I could sit in these? You sit wherever you want. Cool. Well, this is not my lap. You sit wherever you want. <laughs> Sounds good. It's my lap, my girlfriend's lap. My girlfriend. Yeah, it's like this. So, have you ever um, had anything, like, touch you? Like, physically touch you in here before? Like, anywhere, generally, in the house? Uh, no, just the, the static. Static? Just like, like I said, I was walking through static. Oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah. Speed, but, um, yeah. The, the closest thing I had to being touched, I was in bed, mm-hmm. and it was lying on my back, and the covers came up and were pulled right. tight. So it's almost like someone was tucking me into bed. Yeah. But other than that, I've never been touched. Huh. Interesting. Because when I was, um, so we kind of like first got here, and you were kind of like giving us the tour, all the info and stuff like that. It kind of, like, I didn't want to stop you as you were speaking, but it kind of felt like something was tugging on the side of my shirt. As we were kind of in the middle of conversation. Yeah. No, when we never, you were here? Yeah. No, not in here. When we first like kind of uh, arrived, yeah. or when I first kind of arrived, and we were uh, he was giving us the tour. Mm-hmm. It felt like something was kind of like tugging on my shirt. Like I don't know if you guys noticed, but I I don't think he would have noticed, but you might have noticed. I was kind of like looking to my left. Like, is there something? Please there? run now. Not wow. really. You were saying that there was a lot of running. There, yeah, and it yeah. was on this floor. It's right. back and forth. Can you run at least so we can hear you running? It sounds almost like maybe one kid to the other. Go run. Please run now. Or can you go on? Can you go up the stairs that leads to the kitchen? That's a rampart. Mm hmm. And earlier I kind of heard what sounded almost like possibly voices, but I wasn't too sure. Nobody ends up on the street at this hour. No? No. 
Can we hear you talk? Do you want to come talk to us? I would really like if you walked in front of that coffin shaped box on the ground on top of the stairs. It's going to play beautiful music. Anybody else hear a knock somewhere? I heard something, but I wasn't sure if it was me. Or I don't know if it was just one of us shifting, but. Me too. I wasn't Did sure. you just make a knock? Can you do it again? Many lives were lost. Hmm. When? When was that? <gasps> World what? War II memorabilia. Oh. oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. There's more than enough of that. And that you got that Auschwitz medal. Oh, true. Many yeah. lives so that, were yeah, lost. That's the Auschwitz Polish Survivors Medal. Right. So the, the upside down red triangle indicated a political prisoner. And yeah. The P on top, mm. superimposed on top of that, yeah. indicated it was a Pole. Wow. So. Many lives were lost. Makes sense. Oh my god. Are you somebody connected to World War II or a war or something that happened in the area? Were you a prisoner of war? Were you a political prisoner? Sent into those horrible concentration camps? It's really horrible what you did to you. It's weird how the REM pods are not going off anymore. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Tell him that. Tell him that. Dude. Weird. These are not going off anymore. Huh. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I want to be respectful because, well, you have, you were there before us and I have to respect you for this. Have you heard that? What? <laughs> I was telling that the, the Nazi camps, like, they were horrible things. That, yeah. That, that, Lucy. And it says... Haven't we had that name before? Lucy? I think so. Lucy? Lucy. Uh, no. Nancy. 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 Thank you. Yeah. And it says you're very respectful. Oh, okay. And I was telling, like, it was horrible what they did and everything. And yeah. you're very respectful. It's like, whoa. Okay. Well, I can I can tell you right now. I've been to uh, I've been to Auschwitz before. I know it was a horrible place. I saw it with my own eyes. Yeah. Felt the energy from a place like that. Yeah, I was investigating downstairs and I had hanging that hang on. I thought I heard something. Almost like talking. For like a second. I don't know. Sorry, go on. Yeah, uh, I have Nancy and Wilson coming through. Yeah. And he keeps listening to Hart. Oh. Who's the lead singer of Hart? I don't know. Nancy Wilson. And Wilson. And, and Wilson. The, 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 oh, okay. the lead guitarist is Nancy Wilson. So they're list they're hearing the music. I cast peacefully. Okay. Oh. That's interesting. Well, that's fortunate. Yeah. How did you pass? Can you tell us? What's the 357 mean? It's a Masonic reference, I can't tell you. Oh. Uh, I can tell you, but I have to kill you after. Oh, uh, darn. I'm willing to take the risk. I, I have a couple <laughs> of secrets. <laughs> I have a couple of secrets like that as well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't really need to know that bad. <laughs> Well, I'll be a ghost by then, so I'll just help you dig the hole spiritually. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. When I when I went to um, the Canadian Forces Station Alert up north, it's where they they were intercepting the, oh. the communications. During, Do you hear that? That's a REM pod. Yeah, the REM pod's going crazy the over there. War. And <laughs> the guys were showing me like stuff and, hey, what's what behind the... that curtain? If yeah. I show you, I have to kill you. Now it's not. <laughs> now it's not stopping. Maybe it's mad because we're in here. Maybe. 
Are you mad because we're over here? Patience. <gasps> yes, we are patient. And well, we know we have to be patient. Speak for yourself, Jeff. With parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's both of them. It's both of them? Yeah, it's yours and mine. What the hell? Whoa! <laughs> Can you make the light turn on? Can you turn on the flashlight as well? That'd be pretty cool. Go ahead, put all of your energy into the flashlight and light it up. Come on. All three of them. Do you want to make that one stop? Because it's kind of annoying. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez. No chill tonight. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I guess you're done. Well, remember this house has never been investigated past one o'clock. Really? Oh. What, the other people Whoa. left by one o'clock? <laughs> Damn. I'm gonna change the, the setting. Put that on this one. Hmm. All right, well, confirms there's something going on Jeff over here. Jeffrey. Is that what it said, Jeffrey? Jeffrey, a lot of names coming through. Yes, here. but yeah, some people, some of my friends call me Jeffrey too. Can you yeah. tell us what the skeleton's name is? <laughs> <laughs> I would really like that. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. If they, I actually named that skeleton, so if that name comes through on that, I'm gonna ship it. Okay, name. don't tell us. Don't tell we'll us. Wait yes. till it comes through. The name comes through. <laughs> so, um, this is your jumping off point. Okay, so you know some people are very politically. I mean, look what happened today. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are very politically sensitive. Um, yep. They're not comfortable. They're emotionally sensitive. Whatever. This is your right to say thank you and no thank you. But mm -hmm. remember, I was a picker for years. So when you get into the business of you know buying and reselling, especially mm -hmm. when it comes like antiques and older stuff and all yeah. that, you know, like I'll go into a guy's, you know, someone will call me and it's like, this is my grandfather's stuff. I don't want it. I just want to get rid of it. Yeah. What's in there? Oh, I don't know. It's my grandfather's old stuff. My grandfather's old truck. I'm like, okay. Um, you'll be going through stuff. You'll be leafing through cabinets and, and boxes and, and whatever. And then you'll come across something. That it'll be like your holy shit moment. Mm -hmm. You know, like, am I really holding this am I really seeing this yeah. and then you got to make that exec executive decision at one point okay what am I going to do you know don't want to just pretend I didn't see it or mm -hmm. um, me I mean I was always schooled if you forget the past it's going to be repeated mm -hmm. and we're kind of seeing right. that now so you know there was one thing that was drilled in me by my history professors and my history teachers and all that so you're going to see stuff in here and it's probably going to be offensive and it's going to bother you it might give you nightmares it might and I want you to remember something. When you see it in my house, mm -hmm. okay, and you see, and people complain, I said, well, if you saw it in a museum, would you complain? Well, no, it's in a museum. So what's the difference whether it's in my house? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, which is a private museum. It's people private do, even in museums, people complain too. That's so right. It's, That's it's, right. It's people stupid. Still complain. Yeah, it's, it's history. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's history. Yeah, yeah. so really. people complain. Either, people are going to complain either way. So this is kind of your jumping off point. And I tell people, you know, if you're worried, you're remotely sensitive, don't come into the room. Yeah. But everything in this room is 100% authentic. And the reason I keep it in my bedroom, because it's my bedroom. Right. You got no reason to be in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I go in there to sleep yeah. and that's it. So, you know, unless I'm bumping uglies with you, mm -hmm. you're not coming into my bedroom. No. Right. <laughs> so anyways, this is it. So. Wow. Well, guys, I, 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 I tell you now, you don't get offended. This are historical pieces okay and they are part of our history all right so there's a piece so a lot of the stuff in here is again most of my my most sensitive stuff um like this stuff in the cabinet yeah. here um there's stuff in the cabinet over here um damn yeah there's lots of stuff yeah, yeah. Just... and and the, my favorite part is this one and that's one that of, comes from a train. That's oh, that's from a train. That's that's oh, the, wow. the eagle that they yeah. had in front of the train. Okay, gotcha. That was off. A, that was off a German locomotive, and mm -hmm. it's got multiple points of provenance on the back, like the stamps. Yeah, the like stamps. Yeah, the yeah, stamp. What, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I have a friend that he's in the army, and he, he his wife is from Germany, mm -hmm. and he he used to go and visit an old German gentleman in mm. Germany and I I hold in my hand one time a uh, Hitler youth dagger. Well, oh, that's wow. what this is there. 
Yeah, but that that's that's the small that's what they Not call the, 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 the utility one, but yeah. I had the ceremonial one. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no. so there's all sorts of different stuff in here from Yeah. A good girl. Yeah. yeah. This particular ring that's made out of fillings. Oh damn. And jewelry. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um these are Civil War pistols. Uh wow. found a Confederate battlefield. Oh wow. There's a uh yeah. Uh, Auschwitz Survivor Cross. Oh, wow. Poland. For survivor medals. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, so... That place is eerie. Chernobyl First Responder. Damn. That's one of my favorites. That's cool. Yeah, that was sold to me by a, guy, a, a young man who mm -hmm. uh, needed money. So that his father was uh, one of the first uh, firemen on the scene. Mm. So yeah, you know, like he he didn't he got this posthumously, you know, you right. didn't survive. No, no, yeah, no, he, no, he's no, definitely no. So yeah, dead. he sold this to um he sold this to This uh, is Hindu though, no? What? The, um, the that ceramic was, that was a thing? tile that was pulled out of a house in London. Okay. And yeah, it was I think it was yeah. Buddhist or, or Hindu. It would be Hindu. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's and the the swastika cuz it's going the opposite way, so it's actually yeah. not a swastika. Yeah. 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 The, the, the the swastika in that yeah. that sense is it's a love symbol. Mm -hmm. So that's um and of course there's all sorts of like military yeah. um, plates. I got like plates out of a can a German canteen. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah you see the There's all sorts of stuff. Eagle. Yeah. Very interesting. Frater fraternal societies meet and we're called their lodge has multiple meetings okay it can mean the body of the members themselves okay or it can mean the actual building itself the building itself um so when i was when i was going up through the masonic ranks and i needed a place to practice i said to myself you know what i'm going to build a spot in my house where i can practice okay by myself and i have to worry because so, it's all there's mechanics there's verbiage there's mechanics you walk here you say this you step over here you grab this etc mm -hmm. etc so i needed a place to practice where i wasn't going to get nervous so i said i'm going to build a lodge in my house that's how i am i'm kind of yeah sure it seems safe so i built a practice lodge in my house this is obviously not a constituted lodge mm -hmm. this is a practice space for me so I typically don't let people up here. The only people I would let up here are people that were like members of a, a, a body in good standing. So like uh, mem odd fellows in good standing, uh, orange order members in good standing, masons in good standing. I actually had my a couple parties up here for members. So it's designed like a Masonic, it's structured like a, like a lodge for an odd fellows lodge or an orange lodge or Masonic lodge, but it has a bar. Okay. So it's kind of like, or, it's kind of like our party space. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like something we're familiar with. We walk in, it's like, oh, it's like a lodge, except I'm yeah. going to have a beer or two. Yeah. So, so typically I don't... Normal lodges don't have bars? Um, or some do, some don't? Not in the ritual room itself. Right. And On most the out lodges outside. don't have... Most lodges don't have, It depends. Um, okay. Down in the United States, um, places, uh, fraternal societies like the Fraternal Order of Eagles or the uh, Loyal Order of Moose, sometimes they'll have a building. Like I was in Ohio and there was a building. And... Um, I, I said to the, uh, they were having like a garage sale outside, so I stopped and I went up to the guy and I said, uh, is, is this your lodge building? And he said, yes. And this was a, uh, uh, this was a Eagle Lodge, Fraternal Order of Eagles. So Ronald Reagan was a member. Okay. Uh, and I said, you know, I, I should pull that on, I'm tripping on myself, I'm pulling out my D's and I'm a mason. And, I'm, and I said, oh, I've never seen how the other half lives. Do you think I could kind of, and he's like, oh, sure. So he walks me into the building, you walk in this room, and there's like a, like a lobby and there's a door here and a door here. The one door went to their ritual room. The other door you walked in and it was a bar. Oh, cool. And yeah. it was like, a, when I say it was a bar, we're talking a fucking bar. Okay, <laughs> like it had it waitresses and a bar Oh, table. really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a functioning and, bar. Yeah, it's like a regular bar. It's yeah. just, so I said, he goes, yeah. So once we're done our, our, our meeting, we just yeah. walk around to the other side of the room and we just Hang get, out, you know, yeah. get smashed. <laughs> so, I mean, I was Sounds like, damn. Like a good time. It's like, you know, it's an eagle now too, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but typically they don't have a, you would never have a bar in a ritual room. Mm -hmm. And some lodges are just like, they're dry lodges. You know, they don't have a liquor license. They're going, you're not supposed to have alcohol. You're not supposed to legally have alcohol because mm -hmm. that would be wrong. Right. Serving alcohol if you don't have a liquor license. Well, unless you brought your own. What? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I was like, so BYOB. This is, yeah. So this is basically <laughs> what you're going to see is, you know, and I've redone this. Okay. Like, this was not how it originally worked. Right. I've, re, you know, after COVID, I redid everything yeah. and I did it in a more Moroccan Persian kind of feel to okay. it. Um, you know, because again, as we say, learning originated in the East. Mm -hmm. So here we go.
Watch your head. Yep. Yeah. You've been warned. And again, it's hot up here. Yeah. Because well, it's an getting, attic. Yeah, we're getting into the, <laughs> yeah, we're getting into the attic. Yeah. Oh, damn. Holy moly. This is the bar area? The, the bar is this right is um this is the actual this room here was originally the bathroom. Yeah. Um I'll, I'll just walk in and I'll show you. So I built a kind of a, a, a like a, a sideshow themed bar. Damn. Here's what happened. Um there was a gentleman and he was an illusionist. And he was an illusionist that night, and by day he was a carpenter and he was a local. Um, years ago, he pa he went missing, okay, and when they found him, unfortunately, he passed away, and it was self-inflicted. It was very mm -hmm. sad, but he was a really nice guy. Um, so a buddy of mine bought a lot of his estate, and then he called me, and he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle it all. There's so much. Then I, I remember this room was unfinished, and I said, you know what? I said, I'll buy half off of you. I'll build him a room in my house, and we'll give him his own little room. So that's why it's called Billy's Showtime Lounge because mm -hmm. the the gentleman was named Billy and he oh, was okay. he was he was Mexican, he was a Mexican national. Mm. So you're looking around this room, okay? I built this room in one month. Hmm. I did this in one month, about eight hours a day, constant, and I did this room in literally one month. Nice. So these are all his attract. Like he remember he's a carpenter, so yeah. he made everything. This was like the zigzag girl on this side. You have a coffin box. Um, so these are all things that he built himself for his illusions, like mm -hmm. his shows. He did a lot of stuff for kids. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, like birthday parties and you know, pro bono stuff. So um, yeah, he was a he was a really good person. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of felt sad, like when I was like, well, you know, how he ended was bad. Um, but you know what? I mean, you can't just forget about him. Right. So I built him his own little room here, um, and a lot <laughs> of this, it's like a bar. So it's like a little mini bar. Yeah. Um, the most significant thing in here, um, these particular theater chairs. Yeah. So those came out of the um, the Grand Theater in London. So do you know who? Um, God, see, I'm kind of freaking. I'm dropping out now because I'm a little bit tired. Um, Ambrose Small. Ambrose Small was a theater mongol. He was he owned almost all the theaters in Ontario at one point, or he had stock in them. Um, and the Grand Theatre in London was his favorite. Mm. Anyway, there's a book that just came out not too long ago, mm -hmm. and it talks about his disappearance. What had happened was he had sold all his stock in his theatre. He had cashed out, okay? He was last seen buying a newspaper off a kid down in Toronto, and he was never seen again. Oh, wow. So, and then weeks later, someone, one of his staff swore they saw him in the Grand Theatre. But this was, these were out of the Grand Theater. And Damn. Then this was his favorite theater. Oh, co and, oh coincidentally, Haunted. Hmm. Of course. So this is basically um, set up. Like, oh, wow. So the bar would not exist. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this is set up like a like a lodge. Uh, Oddfellow Lodge, Orange Lodge, Masonic Lodge. Okay. You have lodge officer chairs. So principal officer chairs. One, two, three, four. Um... And yeah, this is a, a an altar out of a Masonic lodge. Um, I actually know the gym because it was again. I knew a gentleman. I uh, when I was in Mississauga, Mississauga is my mother lodge. When I was there, I had one of our past district deputies who would be my superior come up to me and he says, uh, Mount Moriah Lodge. I think it was in Caledon was closing, and they want a place to put their stuff because they don't want to throw it out. Nobody wants it. And I said, I'll take possession of it. So they actually sent their dignitaries to my house to inspect the house to make sure that I was not going to be, you know, disrespectful mm -hmm. to this. Right. And they said, well, as long as you, you know, display it in your house, we'll mm -hmm. feel okay about that. Yeah. So I took possession of all this stuff and I have all their wines. I have all their, their altar drape. I have their Bible. I have everything. Wow. So this is kind of like, this is our, this is our hangout. Like mm -hmm. I open up the bar, all this lights up. Uh, we've had some pretty good parties up here. Nice pretty good parties so this is uh this is kind of like yeah i don't really use it very often um again just mostly just for lodge members yeah and again temperature depending like right now it's mm -hmm. really hot really here. hot yeah but it's more usable in the winter time in the fall hmm. and uh, every once in a while i come up here and I have a beer uh, but everything you see in here is all out of a lodge somewhere and you might pass over you gloss over these but these are probably the rarest chairs you're ever going to see 
Those these? are independent order force. Sorry, Canadian order force. My batteries okay. dead. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and it's my large batteries. Oh, okay. Those last. They usually long. last long. It got drained. Yep. Yeah. I got fifty-two percent still. So. Wow. So, anyways, yeah, these um, these are uh, independent order. Or sorry, Canadian order forester chairs, which is a uh, subsidiary of the independent order foresters. Right. Um, and they were a um, precursor to the modern insurance company. So if you know anything about the fraternal societies, you had labor-related societies, you had fraternal societies, you had uh, beneficiary societies. So if you were relatively, you know, you're a modest means and you could only join one, what you would do is you would join a beneficiary society like the Canadian Order of Foresters because they provided, your membership provided you with death benefits it provide while well, you're spelled with death benefits, it provided you with medical care and all that. So that particular group, that's what they dealt with. Right. Um, I remember one time I was in bed and I heard it sounded like, well, you see with the grand staircase, there's all sorts of frames and so on and so forth. Um, I had some frames that were glass and it sounded like it was like the, the biggest crash and it woke me up and I'm like, okay, someone's in the grand staircase. So um, I opened the door to the top of the stairs and there was no one there. Nothing had fallen. Okay, everything's in place. I even actually went down here, looked around going, maybe something fell in the living room. Maybe something fell in the, in the sitting parlor. Nothing. So, I mean, phantom sounds, uh, voices, I mean, it, it's, it's so many it's a mixed bag, yeah. but at the end of the day, like nothing invasive. I've never yeah. been hurt. I've never been punched, scratched. Um, what else? Have I, uh, static electrical, like electrical charges. That's another thing. The first night that I was here, that I was spending the night in the house, um, you know, like, and I hadn't really explored it, right? So I was on the second floor and I was walking down the hall and I grabbed the door and I popped the door open to the attic. And I opened the door and it felt like someone had just walked right through me. Mm. Like every hair on my arm, my head st straight up. And that happened. And then I remember a few years after that, I woke up in the middle of the night one time and I had to use the bathroom. So I'm half asleep. I'm staggering down the hall. And the exact same thing happened. It went from being half asleep to completely awake because it felt like a static charge just walked through me. Wow. So it's like I met it, it met me. And it's like, oh, yeah. okay. So there've been a lot of like like um, you know, like voices and just like it's such a mixed bag of yeah. weird stuff. It's and consistent. It's yeah, like, like all the time. The only thing that that bothered me that I that never that it didn't happen to me. It happened to someone I knew. Mm -hmm. I had company down in the bar, and he saw a person walk into the laundry room. Oh really? I was behind the yeah. So if you go down to the bar area and you walk through uh, the entrance at Mooney's and there's a there's an alco there's like a little window. Mm -hmm where there's a bunch of beer signs and all that. Originally, that was empty. There was no signs. Yeah. So I was behind the bar, and my friend, a friend of mine was at the table, and he was facing the entrance. And I saw him kind of lean out and do this. And I said, what's up? And he mm -hmm. goes, we're alone in the house, right? And I said, yeah, we're alone in the house. He goes, we're not. Someone just walked into the laundry room. Mm -hmm. So we made a beeline for the laundry room. Yeah. I get to the laundry room, there's nobody there. <clears throat> and wow. he was telling me, this guy looked like he was dressed like a butler. He was very, very specific. He had... Oh. He goes, he had a, like, a, like a black suit yeah. jacket on, a white shirt. He had black slicked back hair. He had like a widow's peak. Mm -hmm. So he was very particular. And that was kind of my, my eureka moment because with him, I said, I'm not going to give his job away, but it's a government job. And part of his job is to, to you know, is to be, he's very stoic. He's very analytical. Mm -hmm. He's judging uh, people's potential mental health status. Mm -hmm. If there's a drug impairment, alcohol impairment, you know, you know, or maybe a combination of the aforementioned. So he's got to be very analytical. He can't be prone to histrionics and, and so on and so embellishments, so on and so forth. So when he saw something, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely not losing my fucking right. mind because if you, you know, put a, sure yeah, like if you put on. like a hundred, I said, I said, yeah, if you yeah. put like a hundred people in a room and you said to me, Dustin, who's the least likely to see a ghost? Right. I would have said him, him. Yeah. absolutely him, hundred hmm. percent. Um, so when he saw something, I was like, okay, that's my eureka moment. And he was able to describe it. Absolutely. Completely. From Absolutely. Like everything. Absolutely. And he only got a brief description. Right. And again, he was probably like 50 feet away. Right. Like if he was at the end of the bar and he's looking through that window and there's a limited amount of light and he's still got a clear view of what. So for me, I was like, okay, 
now I'm not losing my mind. I feel mm -hmm. okay. Hmm. So, I mean, that was, uh, that was probably the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I was like, okay, definitely something is going on. Stuff, but um, this is uh, prison art. Oh wow! This is wood out of a. This is wood out of a gallows that I made into a cross. Damn. Yeah, that's the artist that actually painted that. Yeah. There's this painting. There's another painting downstairs, and this gentleman here, he actually painted these and then sent them to the judge who sentenced them. Hmm. So they're actually autographed in the back to Judge So and So. Oh, so damn. when the judge passed away, his daughter sold me these paintings. Wow. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. So now we're going to the basement area. You're going to find a bunch of rooms. Um, there's my, my showroom, there's my work area, and then there's my bar, Mooney's. Okay. So Mooney's is like a speakeasy, you know, explain nice, to you nice. when you get down. Oh, and, and the opium den's downstairs too, but no one really goes there. So. Okay. I'm going to sit on the chair. The what? Why? Oh. Wow, that, <laughs> <laughs> that might. Uh... Oh, I've done it. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, you got hemorrhoids, I'll fix them right up. Oh, damn. Yeah, right now I got a bit of a rash on my ass, but that's just a whole other story. <laughs> so, so well, I guess we'll just go this way. Yeah, yeah I'm going to turn some uh, light on in here. So, this is kind of like my workspace. Okay. Yeah. And this is my this is one of my embalming tables. Mm -hmm. So, this is what I did a lot. Like, when I was doing, ref when I was refurbishing, uh, like, what is it, like, I was, the dental chairs or whatever. I needed a, I needed like a work table, and I wanted something that's soggy and I, it was versatile. So, so I remember thinking, I need a like what would work? And it was like an embalming table. So I actually found a guy who had an embalming table. So this is a nineteen early nineteen hundreds embalming table, um, champion. So it, it can be raised and lowered. It can be tilted, levered, and uh, the drain is down here. And actually, if you go underneath, it says like for you know head here and then drain there. Right. Um, it's super solid. You could probably park a 72 Buick with a family in it and it wouldn't go anywhere. Mm. Um, so yeah, this is one of my uh, one of my favorite pieces. And, and when I die, that's definitely going to be left behind because I think getting downstairs was just insane. <laughs> um, that's an electroconvulsive therapy machine. What the um, heck? So if you know what electroconvulsive therapy is, that'll scramble your brains. Okay. Um, so and those are children in coffins. Yeah. What? No, these are uh, these are called uh, um, these are. Uh, Funeral home displays. Oh, okay. So, you know, back, they don't really have a lot of them. Well, I mean, some do, some don't. Some of the older funeral homes do. But, I used, and I used to work in a funeral home, so I know. Um, the older funeral homes would have a room, and it was specifically to, you know, show uh, what kind of cat, like you could pick out your casket, pick out your vault. Oh, okay. So, this would show you if you wanted to have a vault fabricated to, to house your casket. So the vault would go into the ground, your casket goes in, the lid goes on. So this is what I would say, okay, if you want to have your casket, you want to be buried in a vault mm -hmm. with your casket, this is what your, your vault is going to look like. Interesting. Oh. So okay. this, is a, this is a salesman sample, mm -hmm. as are these. These are salesman sample stones, okay? Um, that's obviously a uh, bombing pump, uh, Turner, so that's not champ, that's champion, that's Turner. Um, yeah, there's another. So this is a bronze one. So if you wanted to have bronze, one made in bronze. I had a copper one, but I buried my ex's rodent in it. Oh, damn. Yeah, so he actually got a pretty opulent fucking send-off. <laughs> for, for, a, for a rodent. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, hey, he was, a, care if he he was family, right? Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Yeah, go out. I mean, damn right. So, um, okay, so you're going to see several of these. So I'm going to explain what they are. Um, this is a 19, early 1900s, so I think it was like 1920s, early 20s, no, 19, no, 1910 to 1920. This style of chair is called a Davis chair, and they're really super light. Um, they were made with attachments. You could strip them down and use them as waiting room chairs, or you could actually use them as restraint chairs, phlebotomy mm -hmm. chairs. Um, and of course, they're very versatile, they're very easy to clean, they were made to be shit on, puked on, bled nice. on, okay, all the nicety stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're actually worth a lot of money, because they're super rare. Right. I actually have three of them, so I'm kind of, you know, they didn't know what they had, sure, I'll pay you. <laughs> you know the amount of asylums I've probably been to, and just there. Well, yeah. these, well these, were, these would be used, these were not just, I mean, yeah. this is a restraint chair, but right, you also right. find them in regular hospitals. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, like in, in waiting rooms. Like I remember seeing a, a brochure where they actually had them all stripped down and just lined up on opposite sides of the wall, and that was a waiting room for the hospital. <laughs> so, 
So this is the showroom. Okay. I don't know. I guess we we'll call it the showroom. The heck? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> That's why I'm okay. talking about it. Yeah, so there's... Oh, yeah, this is kind cool. of like... Um, this is where a lot... Of, I mean, what do I do? I get so much stuff. I get so much fucking stuff. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm sorry, right? <laughs> so yeah, th this is a 1950s dental chair from uh, from Japan. Okay. Um, and the factory was Thanks, in San. Man. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah, this is from Japan. That's a phlebotomy chair, as you can see, it's done in the Davis style. Okay. Um, here's the story with that. I found that in an open air market years ago, and it was painted like a puke green or whatever it was. Um, I tried for like three days or two days to get the paint off, and I couldn't. It was just I was trying to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. So I called the buddy who runs a body shop, and he said he would sandblast it for me. Mm -hmm. So he takes it into his, he takes possession of the chair, he takes it into his bay, and the guy that was doing the sandblasting for him, all the blasting, he was a, a Six Nations medicine man, and he didn't tell him what the chair was. He had it in pieces, like the arm comes out, the mm -hmm. bowl comes out, and all that, the headrest comes out. So he's walking it towards his bay, and he sees him coming, and he just starts doing this, and he's like. What's the problem? And he goes, that chair, bad energy. Mm -hmm. I'm not touching it. And he goes, listen, this is a good customer of ours. We've repaired his car, you know, a fair amount of times. Mm. You're going to... So he goes, okay. So he, <laughs> he comes in a week, he comes in like after the Monday and he walks into his shop and he goes, the smell, like he didn't know what this, it was a weird pungent smell going, going on. So he walks in, he goes into the bay, and there's the employee with a, with a shell and, a, and, you know, and the sage. Saging the, the, the whole place. And then he mm. says to my, my buddy, who's his boss, says, you tell your friend, if he ever brings that thing back, i got to redo this entire place. Because he, he, it's, the reason it's in two different colors is because you ran out of primer. Right. So I never painted the thing because I like the story that goes along with it. But uh, yeah, so that's the uh, the phlebotomy chair that's used to drain human mm. blood, mm. and that's done yeah. in the same style. That's a Davis chair. Like this is a Davis chair that came out of the Hamilton Psychiatric Hospital. That was a restraint chair. That was her in-house <coughs> dentist. Um, a lot of uh, psychiatric facilities uh, back in the day had their own in-house dentist, so they didn't have to take the patients. The out. Hamilton Psychiatric Hospital. Which one was that? That was. I think that was her first one. Oh, uh, okay. I bought that Century off. Manor. Uh, I. Might have it's been. been so. Uh, uh, I I think it, he just said it was the first one. I bought it off. Yeah, the it guy must have been he, Century Manor because I think that was the first one in hand. That was which I've been in there. That particular. Yeah, that, I, that place is fucking hard as shit. Yeah, <laughs> that, particular, that particular cabinet yeah. is, is yeah. That's probably yeah. like nineteen thirties maybe. Yeah, that that fits. That's, that that's literally that fits the timeline perfectly. Yeah. So yeah, and um, that dawn that doors out of the dawn. Mm. Um, I stripped. Oh, out, the dawn jail. Yeah, I stripped okay. out. I, that's I cool. got a bunch of them. I yeah. stripped that one down and left it just to show what the metal would look like. Yeah. But I got two more that I redid. Mm. And plus I have the, I have a transom out of the Dawn, Dawn's death row. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of peeking out of a corner somewhere. Right. So that's, uh, oh, um, shit, I'll just walk right by it. So this is a Victorian birthing kit. So I do like road shows. Mm-hmm. Um, the last show I did was for the Witch's Veil Night Market. This is about two years ago on Halloween. And um, I brought this and I had it in, I had a custom made case for it. And my God, the looks that I got, like this was mm -hmm. the most focused on item. Yeah. Especially because it's got the blood stains, it's got the ether mask. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, so yeah, a lot of people, there was a psychic media that came by and she was uh, looking at it. And uh, she was like, how do you deal with stuff like that? And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, she goes it takes a certain kind of, I don't know if it's like a, like a, spiritual talent or gift or whatever you want to call it um, to have that. But I said, she goes, doesn't this stuff affect you? And I said, no. And I said, I'm picking them up and holding mm -hmm. it. She goes, I'm just getting nervous and nauseous just being around the thing. And I said, well, I'm able to handle stuff like this and it doesn't bother me. And she goes, well, that's kind of a spiritual. She intimated that was some kind of spiritual gift, mm -hmm. whatever that is. But I, I just know that I'm able to handle objects that have bad energies attached to them and it just doesn't affect me for one reason or another i don't know what it is but i mean that's kind of why i'm able to collect what i collect and yeah so that's uh oh and these two over here these are so these are called cool there's a, these are folded up these are called cooling tables so these were precursors to the modern embalming table 
So if you lived in a town and you didn't have a funeral home and funeral directors like just traveled from place to place, mm -hmm. okay, they would carry these. They they literally function like a suitcase. You just you have their own handle and everything. Is it the green thing? No, no. This oh, here. the the these brown here. the wooden things. Okay. These are wooden things. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a morgue stretcher. Nice. Um, okay, cool. So these, you would, the funeral director would take into your home, okay, and you tell your family, okay, everyone out, we're gonna, I'm gonna prepare Anne Ethel, and you can come back in, you know, eight hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you would be embalmed and waked on one of these tables, um, and hmm. they're called cooling tables because they would have buckets of uh, of dry ice underneath to keep the body. Right. Cool. So yeah, this one came out of the Donahue Funeral Home in London. Um, and this one came out of a Kingston funeral home. So if you know anything about Kingston, and you'll know this because you'll know your military, mm -hmm. Kingston was our nation's first capital and yeah. was also the home to most medical schools right. in the country. So, uh, yeah, a lot of grave rob robbing went on then. So very likely whoever was embalmed on that probably didn't, uh, and was buried, was probably dug up later yeah. on and sold for, mm, yeah. sold for parts, literally sold for parts. So Weird that's name. kind of the show, right? My camera keeps trying to focus on a person sitting there. Oh, yeah? Mm. As he was talking, so yeah. I could see it focusing on his eye, but then there it was a square that kept popping up. Interesting. Yeah. But Ooh, what the heck is this? <laughs> so, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I okay. thought you did, you would love the place. <laughs> so, welcome to Mooney's. Nice. Uh, Mooney's is a crime-themed speakeasy I built in 2016. Um, when I took possession of the house, this is the only unfinished room in the house, next to what was the, the bathroom that was in the attic. Um, so I had to decide what I was going to do with this room. Um, there was a full wall that kind of went from here to here. First thing I did was take a sledgehammer to it and took it down. Um, so an unfinished room in a basement, what can you do with it? Well, I said, you know what would be really cool? If I put like a speakeasy in the house, mm -hmm. not just like a speakeasy, but like a crime themed speakeasy with like legitimate stuff from like legitimate haunted places. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what I did. I built it, it was, it's a crime themed speakeasy. And I called it Moonies for three reasons. First and foremost, moonshine was ma often made by the light of the moon because if you made it at night, you wouldn't be able to see where the smoke comes up. Right. Okay. And if you lived in a county where there was like a handful of sheriffs, okay. They, and they knew where everyone lived, they could look out and go, oh, okay, I know nobody lives in that area, so that's probably a still. So that's why you made it at night. Secondly, it was transported by the light of the moon. Why? Because that was where the least amount of police officers and sheriffs were on duty, right? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I called it Mooney's because I named it after uh, one of my favorite gangsters who was Sam Mooney Giancon, and they mm -hmm. called him Mooney because they said he was like literally fucking crazy. He mm -hmm. had a hair trigger temper. Like I remember reading a story one time where his, his kid brother or kid cousin bored his car without asking, so he set the thing on fire just to teach him a lesson. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I yeah, heard about. So he started out as he started out as a, uh, a driver for Al Capone, and then Court just worked his way up and all that. So yeah, so that's why I called it Mooney's, and uh, it's a you'll have you know items from like the you know that doors from the Don Jail, um, that toilets from the Don Jail, that surveillance equipment oh, is all from Kingston Penitentiary. Okay. Um, they actually let you buy it? What? Well, you'd be surprised what you can buy. Yeah? yeah. If I want something, I'll get it. I guess right? probably what, around when it first closed, right? Yeah, like basically yeah. It's, it's, you know, like if maybe they sell it as government surplus or right, whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, like when I bought those doors, uh, I purchased them from the salvage company. Here, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll turn on this light so it makes it easier for you to see. So, and the great thing is when the salvage company took, them up, took out the doors, they took photos of them in their actual cells first. Okay. So I was able to use the photos to match the color code to the door. So when I did that door, that door looks exactly like it, like it was. Exactly like it was when it was pulled mm -hmm. out of the actual, out, out of the dawn. So that's a door, that's another door out of the dawn jail. Um, these uh, theater scenes are out of the Orangeville Opera House. Okay. Another very haunted location. You'll see a ton of like other stuff like hotels, ashtrays and all right. that. All these are from various haunted locations. Uh, very prompt Sattler Hotel, which was on Paranormal Lockdown. Um, it was also on um, uh, Destination Fear. Right. Um, all sorts of other places. Uh, that bar, this bar is actually out of a nightclub. It actually came with the cash drawer and everything. Um, cash drawer. Yeah. Uh, that theater seat is out of the Tri Tivoli uh, Theater in Hamilton, which okay. is very haunted. Mm -hmm. This lecture chair came out of the Criminal Hall of Fame. Uh, when that place closed, they liquidated, uh, they liquidated their contents, and I bought a sizable portion of the stuff. 
Thanks. So, um, what else? What else we got? That sign is at the uh, Criminal Hall of Fame. Um, is that that faux still? Is out of the it was out of the uh, moonshine exhibit. <laughs> So there's all sorts of like. Damn, yeah, cool. There's another door. So this is another yeah. door from the dawn. I painted it black. Um, and then this door here came out of the Middlesex County Courthouse and Jail. Um, and that's it. Got it actually has a dent in one of the bars, so someone's head definitely went. Damn. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. This is where people go to get it. Oh, the Ziegler case. I completely fucking forgot about that. Um, so again, I used to work as I used to buy and sell antiques, I was a picker. Um, years ago, I answered an ad and they were selling used uh, funeral, funeral equipment. Um, so I rented, I talked to a friend, I read board of services for the day, he was a bigger guy, you know, much stronger than I am. Uh, he had a van, so we decided to go down to this place, this funeral home that was liquidated, they were closed, they were liquidating their assets. So I get there and I get down there and it's like there's all sorts of weeds on the ground coming up out of the concrete. There's a big barrier around. And I'm like, well, that's fucking weird. So that doesn't make any sense. They were just liquidating, the, selling some contents. And so I go online and I start doing a quick research and all of a sudden like story after story after story comes up. Toronto Sun, Toronto Star, um, and, you know, funeral home charged with, you know, uh, health code violations, bodies leaking, uh, embalming fluid out of the ears uh, and nose. Um, uh, cremated remains stored in a car dealership, like just one violation after another. Um, so apparently this place had been shut down by the province uh, for health code violations, safety violations, whatever. So I went in there in October and I picked the place myself while my muscle was standing outside. He would not go in. He's like, there's no... <laughs> yeah, all the, all the electricity had been shut off, all the water had been shut off. Um, so I went in and this is one of the things I pulled out of it. This is called a Ziegler case. So, I mean, you'll, you'll know your military, what a Ziegler case mm -hmm. is. So, um, if you've ever watched those, um, news art, news footage of like, you know, the, the, the military plane comes to the, right. and they're bringing out those metal yeah. caskets. Yeah. Though that's a military version of a civilian Ziegler case. So okay. this is for unembalmed bodies. Okay. The transporting of unembalmed bodies. So like, that's why it's made of zinc. Mm -hmm. So this thing actually had... Uh, cooling packs in it so we loaded everything into his van and we get down the road and I keep looking in the back and he's like don't do it I know what you're thinking don't do it I said too late I'm gonna do it so I popped my seatbelt off I jumped into the back and I just pulled the lid over me my driver was just losing his shit he's like you don't even know if the thing was clean I said well it's too late now it doesn't matter <laughs> so but yeah that's that's a Ziegler case so that's uh, okay. uh, these are a couple menus um, from various haunted locations the old mill um, the Walper Hotel, the original one burned to the ground and killed God knows how many people. Um, so that hotel uh, still exists. It's in Kitchener-Waterloo. Mm. So those those menus are ancient. Yeah. And I have, of course, posters from uh, the Criminal Hall of Fame when I cleaned it out. Yeah. My buddy loves this one because it says, warning, this is not a haunted house. These monsters are real. So he goes, this is perfect for your home. Mm -hmm. So Got anything from uh, Preston Springs? No, no, because that place had been locked yeah, down I think it was so close long. before. And there was whole, yeah, it would be yeah. down for so long. And then, of course, there was, um, there was uh, I think, if memory serves me correctly, there were mold issues in that place. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, the floor, you couldn't walk anywhere. Yeah. In it. I would love to have had something oh, for Oh, you could walk in there. Could what you? Are you talking about? Oh, I did it. Yeah? <laughs> we snuck in there years well, fuck ago. fuck you. I'm jealous now. Probably, <laughs> probably about, about a year to two years before it got torn down, we fuck, went in if there. If I'd known that, if I'd yeah. known somebody could have got me an order, I'd love to see yeah, it. There was, there was nothing in there, though. That's the only problem. Yeah, okay. Well, but, see, I mean, you could have stolen in like a chunk of wood or something from the stairs. I don't know. Well, I wanted something significant, like <laughs> yeah, a chair, yeah. a table. I don't. I don't recall there really being other anything other than like bathtubs and showers. Yeah. That's no. maybe a door. I, I wish <laughs> I had got something, but I didn't. That's a that's a uh, well, it's a dental chair. Okay. So it's a field dental chair. I restored that from scratch. World War Two. That's the chair out of the Westminster Hospital in London for. Uh, uh, that dealt, that was uh, built for veterans. Okay. Um, that's yeah. That's what I did during the pandemic. I built a tiki bar. <laughs> oh, what the heck! Look at this thing. Yeah, I, I, that is so bar, cool. Yeah, I get I get really bored one day, so you know I'm gonna build a fucking yeah. tiki bar in my laundry room because I can. <laughs> so yeah, and then um, this table here. Now it's got a glass top, but it didn't originally have a glass top, so. Okay, where did that come? That was the 
the, the Queens, was it the Queens Hotel in Port Hope, there was a biker murder. Yeah. Um, and that was out of that particular, ho that was out of that particular hotel. I bought that from the family. And there was a murder and a biker got his brains blown all over that fucking table. Damn. So when I got the table, the top, the Formica top was all peeled, was starting to peel off. So I just ripped the thing off and I had a piece of glass cut for the top of that. That's crazy. So, yeah, that was, um, that was the last thing the guy ever would have saw. <coughs> so that's that. Uh, I guess we'll go upstairs now. Whenever you're ready. All righty. So... We are currently down in the basement, a.k.a. the dungeon of the Wade Manor. And uh, there's a bunch of crazy medical equipment. I'm literally sitting on a phlebotomy chair, which is apparently like a blood draining chair. You know, you can just kind of imagine what they used to do with this. So I don't know what's going to happen down here. Um, but apparently there have been people who have sent some really bad juju about this specific chair so i figured why not sit here have jeff ask some questions he is currently in the other room right now and uh, see what comes through while we do the estes method all right starting in oh wow these are oh okay oh yeah all right ready when you are let's go so to the spirit of this house if you're listening my friend Angelo has a device of it in his hands and he's got headphones so you can talk through him. So can you tell us your name? Low. What do you mean by low? We're low. There's a very low voice coming through. Oh my god, okay. That 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 that's Dustin's license plate. Okay, so you're 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 telling me that you know some 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 stuff about Dustin. Can you tell me more? Home. Yeah, that's his home. Do it. Do what? Do you want me to do an Estes? Let help! Me. Did you say help? Oh my god. No. No? What, what did you mean? Go away. Why do you want me to go away? Did we, did something you didn't like? Couldn't, the, the floor and then home. It came, I think. Then, what? You gotta lower this deafening. <laughs> to which spirit are we talking to? Hello. Hello. Which spirit are we talking to? Are we still talking to the spirit of the hound? Blue. Hello. Hello. Were you upstairs in the doctor's room where the light was blue? Died, and then something. Did you pass away in this house? Beret? Beret. Um, Are you related to the military... Um, Laughed? Draft? Were you drafted? Are you related to the memorabilia related to the Second World War? Were you drafted in the German army? Are you Don't. Don't. Are you attached to that Hitler Youth dagger? Were you a youngster that was recruited into the... Mike? Mike. Mike or Might? 
Oh, I think it just said my name. Whoa. What do you want? Yeah. Do it. What do you want me to Hair? do? Hair? Whoa, that was loud. I think it said Harry? Don't. Don't what? What do you want? Do you, what are you forbidding us to do? Don't want us to go in, into the Masonic Lodge upstairs because it's, it, it's supposed to be secret? Swing? This is it? This is it. Okay. So you don't Music. Oh man, what the fuck was that? What? You got touched? Something just touched my back. No. Okay. That was weird. <laughs> what the hell? Did you just touch? Dude. That? You... that was like a hand reached in between this gap and literally just grabbed my back. <laughs> Seriously? In between this gap? Hang on. It literally felt like I'm just sitting here just minding my own business and it felt like a hand between this gap, literally just went and just like tried to grab my blubber. And you get a cell door behind you. Is that like what that is? Oh yeah. shit, I forgot that was even there. Like from oh, the damn. Jail, it's like somebody. Yeah, from yeah the... it, it literally felt as if somebody tried to reach in. Whoa. Maybe they tried to grab my ass or something. And I, I don't know. I, I can't wait to see on the EDI what, what if that yeah. has a. You have the EDI right beside you. Oh the, yeah? The orange box. Oh, like there was a change? It, in pressure or something, Ooh. so. Well, before we continue, <laughs> I need a, a swing of my Michelob. He's like sitting where. Damn, that scared the, the shit out of me. I literally jumped and off the he chair. Felt like something. It's like, it's like somebody oh my grabbed God. out of the jail All door. All right, I'm back in. Whew. So he's going back in. <laughs> Damn. Ask. Are you related to the jail? If the one that grabbed Angelo, are you movie? Related? Something about a movie? Are you related to the, that that door? I can't. You can't what? You can't be attached to this to the door. No. I love. I love. What do you love? There's like a man mumbling in the background. I can't make it out though. Do you love what Dustin made with the house? This. This. Anthem? So you love what Dustin did with the house, the museum and, and everything. Couldn't make that out. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice what he did. So you, you're related to the house. Amazing. <laughs> yes, it's amazing what he did. It's really beautiful. But are you related to the house? Do you? No, unfortunately I'm not. Are you related to any memorabilia or artifacts? Do it? Again? Countdown. Five? Thank you. Did you set countdown? One countdown from five? Five? Go ahead, four. Kidding. Oh. <laughs> so you are kidding about the countdown. What? It <laughs> was really low. Wait. Yes. Okay. Blonde? 
Yes, Angelo is blonde. I don't have any hair. Stop. Stop. Go. Why do you want us to go? I won't. Well, we are you attached to some sort? Ooh. Start to feel weird. Piece of? To attach to a piece of something? Fight it? Pieces. Wait, you said piece? Yeah. It's part of the tattoo that says help. Tattoo says help. No piece, just piece. Are you talking about Dustin's? It's a very faint voice. Tattoo? Jacob? One of my favorite authors, Jacob Reese. Oh. Are you talking about Dustin's favorite author? Jacob Reese? Is it? People Under the Stairs. It's an old Victorian era uh, book. Oh, yeah, the people under the stairs. Sorry, people, people of the abyss. Sorry. Oh. Are you talking about that? Thank you. You're welcome. You say this multiple times, sir. When you say do it, there's what do you there's make? somebody speaking in the background, but I can't make it out. Evie, home. Oh, someone yelling. Bring it. Bring it. Is there multiple spirits coming through to Angelo? Can at least one answer? Go look. I won't go look. I'm trying to ask you. Okay, what? Reverse? So like it said, go look again. Dustin's gonna go look. Did you did, did, did you walk? Truman, I think. Are you related to the Second World War? To the artifacts that Dustin have. Inside. Inside of what? Beautiful. Yes, what he did with the house is really beautiful. But are you related hmm. to the memorabilia from the second world? Emma. Oh, you're pulling energy from me. I'm starting to get tired. You're pulling energy from me. You're smart. I know. Thank you. 90%. Not even a hundred? That's the story of my life. Three. Three what? I don't know. Related to the... Listening. And guys, unfortunately, we won't tell you any secrets about Freemasons. Uh, Who's that? Or anything. My name is Jeff. Sound like it said bitch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Keys, and then I couldn't hear the rest. I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to just ask Go. questions. Go. Hide. Five. Hide five. Is it hide five? Yeah. Whew. Go. All right, yeah. I'm starting to feel kind of drained. I'm gonna come out of this. Yeah, yeah. Whew. You good? Yeah. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah, that was that was really interesting. Was it? Some some of the answers that we were getting were were relating to 
relating to... What the heck? What happened? I wasn't... What? I wasn't recording? Did your battery die? My battery died. Oh. What? It was a brand new battery. How much did it record? I don't know. I'll go grab another battery upstairs. All right, oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We, uh... We were back in the basement, took a little bit of a break, got a couple of Peroni uh, Capris, apparently. Pretty good, <laughs> not gonna lie. And uh, we got Jeff, he's going in. You good? I hope you can't hear anything we're saying right now. All right, Jeff, or whoever might be here with us, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the spirits that haunt this house in the Wade Manor? Feel free to come through to my friend Jeff, who's listening right now. He's sitting there on that embalming table, which is creepy. I can't believe he did that. The balls. It's the Quebecois. They got balls. I did a photo. Did you? Yeah. Did you just say something, spirits? Birthday girl. Birthday girl. That's interesting. Everybody's birthday coming up. <laughs> Whose birthday about is it? About you. Love you? About you. Oh, about you. If you're down here, maybe you can make a noise. Leave. Why don't you go and uh, touch my friend there on the table? How about that? Maybe give him a little pinch. Just to let him you know. How are you? Let him know you're there. I'm good, how are you? It's us. How many of you are here? Not me. Oh, that's a strange one. I don't know how to answer that one. <laughs> Reply to it. What do you mean by not me? I have a question. Can you tell us who it was? that went through Dustin and said he felt somebody walk right through him. Who was that? You? I know it wasn't me. Child. I can't do those things even though I, that would be pretty fucking awesome if I could. <laughs> Can you tell us your name? Are you near the person who did it? The what? The person who went through him. Can you tell us their name? Can you tell us if you can see any of us? Maybe. That's just Dustin. I just went upstairs for a second. Can you tell me what color shirt I'm wearing? Either. Edith. Who's Edith? Are you connected to the house? Get it? No.
When? I just can't go much there. I know you did. I noticed you came, you ninjaed back into that chair over there, but... Ninja? It, yeah. You came back like so quietly, I didn't even notice you. I came back and sat down. But for a second it sounded almost like somebody might have been upstairs. Is there somebody upstairs walking around? Kind of weird how this is. Fine. Doorway. Take a right. Sunday. It is Sunday. Sunday, July 14th. I heard something about Jesus. We have a Jesus statue. There's Jesus all over this house. There's Christian. Jesus everywhere in this house. What about Jesus? <coughs> People are. It's pretty remarkable that it literally said Sunday, July 14th, 3 12 a.m. at the moment, the day after Donald Trump was almost assassinated. But nothing can kill that. Not even Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean by take a right? You said take a right. What was that supposed to mean? Desperate. The power? The power? What do you, what do you mean by the power? There's a phrase. Beyond? The power beyond? You want to finish your sentence? Don't go back there. Don't go back there. Don't go back there. Is that what it said on this thing? Well, it said on that in the, the voice box. Yeah, is it funny? Um, I don't thought go. I heard a I thought I heard a voice. <laughs> don't go back there. Why why don't There's you There's a voice there? trying to come through me. It's really funny. Use something else. I, I was getting the same thing. When I was doing mine, it kind of sounded help like it was talking in the back. Oh fuck that again. What? It said help me. That's a reoccurring thing down here. Is it? Help me is a reoccurring thing. Help what? me. Help what? me please don't help me again. Me. Help me again. Okay. How do you want us to help you? What happened to you? Philip. Help us come through three times tonight. Yeah, it's death. It's death. It's death. We're good. Did something happen to somebody down here? The bad here? man's here. Oh, Jesus Who's the bad man? Less hurry. Vocal. Come on down. And it wasn't the price is right. <laughs> What are you talking? What are you talking? You keep asking for help. Help with what? It's weird because when people. Has there ever been like any records of like murders or anything in here? I couldn't find anything for all my research. No? No, one instance of domestic violence, murder, anything like that. Because it's weird, because when I was in there, I kept hearing like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. 
like almost like somebody was telling somebody to stop. Yeah. Uh. I don't know what the hell they were doing. You okay? Yeah, there's lots of uh, radio pollution. I couldn't find, yeah, my research is I couldn't find one instance of like any kind of like media. I mean, if it was years ago, they probably There's lots of radio pollution, but through the radio pollution, I was hearing a voice in the back. A man, right? I heard a man, but I was hearing a woman. Did it sound like some like two people were having a conversation? Yes. But very faint, right? In the back, yes. Yeah, that's exactly the same thing that I was getting, and I couldn't make out a single thing they were saying. It was just... Uh, there have been a couple instances, and yeah. it was always on a Sunday morning, where I, like when I was, my ex was asleep upstairs. Look, yeah. look what it said. There's lots of us. I, I'm telling you, that we're hearing, I'm always hearing lots of voices. Yeah. What what came on Spirit Talker? Hmm. There's lots of us. Huh. Interesting. That is weird. Yeah. Whoa. So you were saying you're. No, there were there were a couple instances on a yes. Sunday morning where my ex was asleep upstairs and I was downstairs in the kitchen making breakfast mm -hmm. and getting coffee ready, and I heard a distinct mumbling upstairs, like it was sounded like a woman's voice. Yeah. And I had, you know, she had come downstairs and said, who are you talking to upstairs? And she goes, I wouldn't talk to anybody. Yeah. And that was like two Sundays in a row hmm. at the same time. It was like nine o'clock in the morning. Interesting. So Which we're like, almost there. We're almost six hours away <laughs> yeah. at so this point. Kind of like, yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah. It was like, okay, so like, you know, two weekends in a row on a Sunday and nobody was awake. Okay. She was asleep upstairs and I heard a distinct, it was like a, like a muffled, it was a muffled woman's voice. Like she was carrying on a conversation with someone else. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out. That's, that's kind of, that's, hearing. that's also what I was And I thought she too. was talking to someone upstairs. I said, yeah. like, who are you talking to? Are you on your phone? She goes, I wasn't talking to anyone. I was asleep. Huh. Interesting. So. Well, yeah. I was hearing a conversation like between two people. Yeah. It was, it, it was, was gargled, in the back. Right? Like yeah, with it the was... radio pollution, it was really hard to make out, <clears throat> but some sort it was really interesting and and the words that came out when i was right but i mean it, it changes it can be yeah. anything like you know like i mean i was talking earlier about the, the phantom ball like i was sitting here yeah and phantom I, ball the yeah. Fan, you know, there was some, you was telling jeff the yeah. phantom ball like i was sitting here one time and i heard a very distinct Oh wow! And I've actually had the same thing happen to me. Before. And it yeah. sounded like like if you ever taken a yeah. golf ball yeah. and bounced it, yeah. and it's this is before that you see there's a big Persian rug. Mm -hmm. Well, prior to that there was no rug there. Okay. So it was just the dining room table, the chairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I heard it sitting here. So what I did was I was like, what the hell was that? I, some, I thought something fell off a shelf. Yeah. So I got down on my hands and knees, and I'm looking underneath all the cabinets, and I'm looking underneath all the table. There's nothing. I go into the kitchen. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. To this day, I can't account for what that sound was, but it's a very distinct. Wow. Someone dropped a hard ball on the hardwood floor, yeah. and you could literally hear it. <laughs> Drove away. And you're still looking for this golf ball to this day. But I have no. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't even fucking golf. So yeah. like, I don't even know. What, I have no idea what it's like. Could. I don't know where this golf ball would have come from. But, but. it was a very, it was a very distinct sound yeah. of that of a of something round and solid, uh, hitting the ground and yeah. then just kind of trickling away. Huh. And you so, were telling me earlier, sometimes you hear children voices. Children. There was you know, a couple times. I mean, I woke up in the middle of one t in the middle of the night one time because I heard a girl to the left of the bed say hello. Oh wow. And then there was another time when I was just. You know, I'd had uh, an edible, like I just started <laughs> using edibles. Mm. And, you know, my girlfriend at the time was, you know, she was accustomed to smoking weed and so on and so forth. And I was in bed and I woke up and I was feeling really, really nauseous. Like mm. I was feeling really diz dizzy and discombobulated. So I'm like, I'm not sure. I think I might be sick. I'm not sure. So I got up and I was going to the bathroom I was, and, and I was starting to get dizzy. And I was heading towards the bathroom, and all of a sudden I heard the same, hello. So you heard it twice? Twice. Oh, and at that point, I was like, I am so messed up. I don't care. If it, <laughs> it could have been the devil. I'm yeah. like, I just don't want to puke on my floor. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I got to the bathroom, puked my guts out, and then I was, you know, I was fine. 
but I literally, I remember going to the bathroom and it was on the second floor and I heard Whoa. that. And there have been a couple times when I was in the base. there was one time I was in the basement and I heard someone walking on this floor. Mm -hmm. And then there was another time where I was sitting where you are and I heard running hmm. this way. So it was running west and then it ran east. And it wasn't adult running. <coughs> it, was, it, was, it was very light. Childlike. Yeah. No so it's steps. Yeah, it was very light. It wasn't it, it was an adult stomping around. It was a child ran this way and then ran that way. Wow. So I've heard footsteps as well. So I mean I don't really it's it's not one particular thing and it's yeah. accumulation of things it's and always it's a, different things. It yeah, and it's like a variety it. of things. So does, does it ever seem like since you're adding all these different objects from everywhere that obviously could have attachments to them, does it seem like things maybe change when you add stuff or do you think anything ever happened because of a specific item, any specific spots because of an item that you've added? I don't believe so. I think this stuff was always here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very cognizant of when I bring an item in to like pay close attention right. to it, like mm -hmm. especially in the space in which I put it. Yeah. Um, but you, you have had people, you were telling us earlier that you had people notice certain things carried a certain energy about that absolutely like, the like you know like the the, the, the individual yeah. that was right. that was six nations yeah um so obviously put a lot of credence in what he had to say mm -hmm. um so i mean it's entirely possible but for me it's it's for me it's kind of difficult to you know like i don't feel like there's certain items in here and it's like you know psychic, bother you. Yeah. you know psychic mediums of like how can you live with something yeah. like that and look at it daily and handle and there's something in, I don't know if it's in my, my genetic makeup or my, my, my spiritual psyche or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay, but there's something about it that just doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. It just, like, I can handle it. I can deal with it. I sleep, I can have it in my room. I can sleep next to it when it doesn't bother me. Whereas other people, it's like, oh my God, get it out. Like, I had a couple, I had a friend who's a doctor, and he asked me, he, there was a couple uh, nurses that he knew, and he was talking about my house to them. And they said they wanted to see the house. Well, right. the one was a psychic medium. So I brought them into the house, and I knew within a few minutes of them being here, they were not comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they, once they were done the tour, they went outside, they saged them, they smudged themselves, and then they were gone. Right. Kind of a deal. And again, that's that's fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's for some people, and it's it's not for other people. But for me... You know, I've never, I've, I've, have I been spooked? Yeah, there's certain things that have spooked me and certain things that kind of made me go, hmm, well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But I don't have that, you know, there's nothing that that fosters that innate sense of fear in me, like, oh, I made an egregious error in judgment by right. bringing this into the house. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know, maybe it's by hook or by crook, it just doesn't bother me. So, you know, whether it's, you know, it's a, it's weird. It's it's just it is what it is. I guess I don't know. Cool. Well, it's like liking um, uh, historical pieces, and you, instead of contemplating them into a museum, you're building yourself your mm -hmm. museum. Well, I mean, I always look at it like this. I mean, I've always had, I've always believed that there are things in this house that were here before I even bought it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and again, things were happening in the house long before I brought stuff into it because, you know, for years I had nothing. You know, just every penny I had went into the house. But I think that whatever is here, okay, and I believe there are multiple things here, I think they're able to ascertain, they've been here long enough to ascertain what my personality is like and what my intentions are like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think they understand that, you know, my, I understand that my role is essentially, I'm just a curator. Yeah. Okay, you know, this is not a, you know, I'm I'm very cognizant of how I speak about objects I'm very you know like you get I'm not a poke the bear mentality right mm -hmm. so there are people who are you're definitively I tell people when you come into my house and I'm doing a tour I'm like pretty pleased with sugar on top do not poke the bear because I have right. to live here yeah and I will not be held responsible if you get out of line mm -hmm. okay and something bad happens to you because that has happened to people here mm -hmm. where it's like you know I get the call from a, a buddy and it's like oh my god my girlfriend broke up woke up with bruises on her you know after being in your house, I'm like, well, was she getting out? Well, she was getting a little bit lippy. And I'm like, well, <laughs> okay, well, you know, A leads to B leads to C, right? right. Mm -hmm. But I've always been very cognizant of how I speak about objects, how I treat things. And I kind of, when I moved in here and I realized what the house was like and there's stuff left over, 
you know, I kind of had a verbal, I said, you know, I made a verbal understanding one time. I said, listen, if you're here, I'm not interested in kicking you out. Okay. If you treat me with respect, I'm going to treat you with respect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you don't want to leave. You don't have to leave. It's a big house. I don't mind you staying here. Mm -hmm. You know, so as long as you don't hurt me, as long as you don't, you know, go out of your way to, you know, hurt people that are good to me. Okay. And that are, that are, uh, you know, of my personality type and my, my temperament then I'm good with that, you know? So the second something changes and you start going after people that are that don't deserve it, okay, you know, it's time for you to leave. So, but it's been a harmonious experience and, uh, you know, I don't really have any interest in, in changing it. But yeah, right. by the same token, I have to be conscious of when I bring a new item in, um, you know, if, if the dynamics of the house changes, you know, if, the, if the, the aura of the house changes, if there's a heavy, you know, if my personality changes, um, you know, there was, and that was one of the reasons why I redid the attic, because when I was up in the attic, um, prior to me renovating it, when I saw that, that black shadow figure, I would be fine. And then I would go into the attic and then within 10, 15 minutes in the attic, my personality would change. Really? Mm -hmm. And you would see, I would get very angry. I'd get agitated. You see, like, have you ever seen like a, um, you know, a lion in a cage and it's kind of pacing? Yeah. I would get that kind of feeling. Do you think something happened up there? Uh, I can t I can tell you it's something that happened to me and there were items that uh, were reminders of what happened to me mm. and so when I redid that attic I had it redone entirely I had it blessed and I've never had an issue in the attic since okay. mm. so I think it was just you know you know when you're surrounded by things that bring up bad memories to you or you know kind of reinvigorate past traumas to you. Mm -hmm. I think that's what would happen because I would get up there. Anywhere on the house, I'd be fine. And I'd leave that attic and I would be... Normal. Yeah. yeah. But if I went into that attic the way it was in its previous you know, inception and I was up there 10, 15 minutes, you could see a definitive change in my personality. Right. I would start to get very agitated. I'd start to get very angry. And I'm like, okay, I have to leave the space. <laughs> so that was one of the motivating factors for me to redo the attic space. And now when I'm up there, I don't feel anything. Right. I don't feel anything. So that's probably the best decision I made. So yeah, it is. Uh, but other than that, no. Cool. All no. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, pretty much it for this one. So I'm I'm definitely gonna confirm you do have a haunted house. <laughs> There's something going on here. Um, but like you said, I don't think it's anything like malicious or no. like super dark. There is the possibility that maybe something happened here or in the area. We don't know. Um, there is another story about, you know, something that happened in the community, but can't really get into those details because it's a little too personal for people. Um, but, yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's the area is pretty old. But if you're able to come out to Woodstock, Ontario, definitely... Uh, hit up the house i'll leave the uh the link down in the description below um set up a tour maybe if you want to come and investigate you know feel free to hit up the owner and uh arrange it with him but apart from that go and subscribe to jeff as well jean francois the sexy oui, oui. quebecois tabernacle uh, oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. and uh subscribe here go and follow follow me on my social medias get some merch if you want it support the channel that sort of thing and uh we'll see you guys in the next episode love you bye-bye <laughs>